Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So today we're doing Ink and Wash of an Italian <laughs> sports car in like a little building. Um, I show you how I go over this step by step, but I also show you how I changed the color of the original car in the photograph, which was like a navy blue into a red because I wanted a red car. And then how I go about painting shadows and color tones and then not just like grays, you're adding like a little bit of color. Here you see kind of like a purple tone. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Have you ever tried changing colors of things that you see that you like? You just don't want to keep the same color? All you do is just changing the color but keeping the same value. So if you're very stumped on how to do this, I'm showing you how I do this. If you have any questions, like I said, leave them in the comment section. Also check out my Patreon. I have ad free videos, traceables, exclusive tutorials, and a live stream in the top tier. It's just a place people go and support my channel, which I appreciate so much. And we also have a Facebook group where we do weekly um, challenges and monthly giveaways. So check it out. Um, it's in the description. There's a link in the description box and you can join and cancel anytime. So without further ado, let's go to Italy and do an ink and wash of an Italian car. Ah. So I drew this image and I gave you the image in the description and I just went over it with a Sharpie pen. This is ultra, ultra fine point Sharpie pen and just kind of drew over all my little pencil marks, you know, you can make them more stylistic if you want. I'm just kind of doing my little simple outline that I like to do. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're just drawing it in with the ink and wash. And that's how I like to do my ink and wash with the Sharpie pen. You can use a fountain pen that has water -based, waterproof based ink as well. So like I said, I'm going to change the color of the car because this is navy. And you see and there's like little red dots. Maybe we change the color of that. I don't know. So I have cadmium red light, which is a nice bright orangey red. And I have this really great red called pyro red Rubin, which is kind of like more like a scarlet red. I'm going to play around with that. I'm using my Princeton 10 uh, Velvet Touch series. So it's a very orangey red, the cadmium red light. And here's the pyro red, just like a cherry. So I think the cherry red would be too intense, wouldn't be work workable for this. But if you combine the two, let's see how they come out. Not bad. And if you don't have red at all, and you have magenta, and you have cadmium yellow deep, you can make a red. Grab some more cadmium yellow deep, and more magenta, and there's your red. It's a little on the pink side. You keep playing with the with the pigments back and forth until you get the consistency of the color you want. See, you can make your own red. So I combined these two reds to get the red that I wanted. And let's see how we go. So you just take the same kind of color tones. You just, so obviously in the blue, it's darker here, lighter here. Just same thing, but just mixing it differently. Instead, we're going to leave some of the white with the red. And I always start off light. Just go right over this. I'm not using, I'm not going to paint that white spot. And I'll go over here, leaving a little, that little white halo you kind of see in the car. Just kind of filling it in with the red. Now it's kind of pretty light, so I'm going to go back in with another kind of wash going around all these areas and leaving white here. Zoom in so you can see better. See, it's really, really, really loose. This is gray, this chrome kind of color. But you see the red cars all over Italy as opposed to just deep blue. I like the photograph, just playing around with ink and wash. And just fill that color in. Like obviously, because like I said, it's super light right now. We'll have to go back in again with another wash and fill it in. We're just getting the initial wash down of where we want to place the red. And leaving that white, like I said, I'm leaving it white. I don't know what this thing is over here. It's something with the door. It's nothing to do with the car. So it's fairly light. If you take those same colors, make them much thicker, 
which means minimal water. Then you're going to get less loose water like this, and you can start to bleed in deeper red. Because right now it's so light. And I'm just touching on the edges, kind of not in here, just around here, and then going back over in here. Getting that really intense red in there. That's why I love ink and wash. It's just kind of like you can feel you feel a little freer when you're painting. I do want to fill this in in these areas. And up in here. And I have a cute little red car. <laughs> I've left some like white areas in here, here and there. And we can get them even deeper by just taking that pyro red and grabbing some over here. You can't see it, let's see. Just the pyro red by itself. And just tippy tap. Some of the darker areas you would see in this car that are on the photograph with that deeper red. See? Be in here indentation. You'll see some here. Take the same color value that you see in the blue, just turned it to red. A little bit darker over there, here. Squint your eyes. It helps. And then you see the darker tones throughout. And this one's really light up there. This isn't really white white, so we can kind of blend it with water. It's just really light where the, the sun is shining on the car. So I'm just now going back in and just blending, tapping my brush on a towel in there. If you feel like this is too light up here, just throw in a, a little bit of a wash. And there's our red car. <laughs> fun, fun, fun. Now you notice like most of this stonework is like a yellow ochre kind of color. You can just grab some yellow ochre if you have it. If you don't, take your burnt umber, put some yellow cabin yellow deep in there. Maybe touch it like paint gray. And you have that same kind of color, see? See the two? This is yellow ochre, and this is the one I just made. So it's burnt umber and cadmium yellow deep. It's a little bit dark, deeper, but... And then the yellow ochre might be too yellow. I'm gonna tone it down. I'll add a little paint gray in there. Tone it down, water it down a little bit. If you wanna add the opposite of yellow is purple, so you can make a purple like blue with magenta. You see, blue magenta, and you can add a little of that brown. What's up, right? Oh, we'll turn it brown. See how you add a little bit of this opposite color? It dulls it down because it's brown when you mix the two. So that's how I go about just washing in that color. You can use the same color brush if you want, I just kind of wash in this terracotta, well, I wouldn't call it terracotta, like a old yellow ochre tone. I'm kind of going in between those little greens, just loosely washing in this color. And I'll play around with adding some tones in a second. It's very dark under here. You can put the color down and then we're gonna go back over with another color. So it looks more natural. Just washing this in real quick. We're not filling this whole page. We'll add the highlights of the shadows and stuff in a minute. I'm gonna 
to water this down. It's a little too deep. Okay, we get the initial color of like a yellowish terracotta. Not terracotta, why I keep saying that? Um, <laughs> stone. It's similar to the bottom here too. So you can kind of throw that in if you want to lighten it up a little bit or add some more gray to it. And water it down. You can kind of get the same color in the bottom here. And I'm just kind of washing it out like this. See? Really fast. Still using my number 10. I'm just getting an initial wash in, and then we'll start to play with filling more color layers in there. Just going fast. I'm going to kind of throw that color in between here, even though there's going to be a lot of greenery in here. I'm just going to put it in there. Okay. And this little threshold here going into the doorway is just a light color, so we're going to get a little darker here anyway. So we put our first initial wash in. And once we get that done, we can start to play with adding more value under it. the awning, which is mostly white with a little of this color, actually. So you can kind of leave it, or you can throw some of that color just a little bit here and a little bit on top, because we will get darker up in here. All right. And then the inside here is really, like, deep dark brown black but here the doorway is more like just like burnt umber it's got that reddish brown you don't have to get really particular with it you just kind of put that color in it's up to you it's only like you can really see it here and then the rest gets pretty dark so if you want to just put the first wash in the color and then we're going to go in and add this deep grays. Here, we have burnt sienna kind of color. If you don't have that, just take the, the burnt umber and mix some magenta and a little bit of yellow. And you get that terracotta burnt sienna color. It's a little too dark. I'm going to lighten it a little bit by adding some water on this side. This side gets a little bit darker. Can add another wash of color there. And there's another, another terracotta color. You can make it gray or whatever color you want. It doesn't have to be the same colors as this. Just kind of putting this color in here, kind of like a dark brown. And again, here, like here is the, like a cream color. I'm going to make it terracotta. I'm changing it up as I can be much lighter on the right side the left side because the sun is really shining like this but I'm just gonna do that just get these colors in here and then we'll deal with the shadows in a bit so you get those colors in starting to dry now and for our greens we're just gonna mix peacock blue with cadmium yellow deep, right? A little Prussian blue too. Make some nice greens. If you want to put a little burnt umber in there. Make it simple, just some, some simple green color. Just kind of putting that in for these little funky plants here. I don't know what you call these. Somebody will know. I'm just filling this color in real quick. And over here, they have that Mediterranean greenery. It's not an olive tree, that's for sure, but it's something. I'm just kind of wiggling my brush back and forth on the marks that I made. And then for some of the greens, I make it a little bit brighter so you can see some bright greens happening in here. I'm just tapping in that green color. Voila. And then I can add some deeper color down here at the bottom. Doesn't have to be perfect. 
just a little illustration. All right. While we have some of this terracotta kind of colors, kind of stick some of that in here. See, and you can make it a little darker. Just kind of wash it down and throw some colors. Like you see in here, they're kind of like, it's not all this one flat wash of yellow. There's some of that rustic color in here. I'm just loosely sticking it in here and there. Now we're going to have a shadow that kind of comes here and then the inside of the doorway, obviously. It's pretty dark. It's a little dark in here the doorway. Putting a little brown in first. For this color here, it's like a gray, I wouldn't call it grayish brown. You see those little marks? I kind of did little wiggles of like, it looks like the um, building is kind of eroded. So there's some gray going on in here and around here. Just kind of washing in that color, the gray. I drew some of it, the outline, you can see some of it. And now I'm just going to paint some of it in. This is gray. I just used some paints gray and then mixed it with some of the yellowish color here. So it makes sense. Not some random kind of color. And it goes up in here. Now under the awning, it gets really dark gray. We can just gonna say take that same color and go across, and then we're gonna get even darker. And I would say it's more of a bluish gray. You don't have to get super technical with it all. Like here we go, get this the gray, mix it with some of the yellow ochre, water it down, tap on my big towel, and then there's some of that eroded stonework up top. Just a nice light value. Can go in some of these bricks and whatnot. See? Getting there. You can see that it shows some ripples of the awning. And then it fills it in. And that looks more purple. So, remember we talked about purple? Just take some ultramarine blue, your magenta. We have our purple. You can mix a little brown and gray to that. Purplish gray. Gonna water that down. I'm gonna add some more blue. So it's a bluish purple. And you can add some gray to that. Now, really water that down. See the consistency. I'm going to tap it on my towel, get off the excess paint. We'll start to see how it looks on the underneath. Because it's the opposite of the yellow. So the purple looks nice as a nice shadow. So here I'm going in and adding that shadow color under the awning, over in here, and down here. And then it gets a little bit lighter. So we have to water down that color even more when it goes over here. And there's this little shadow. And you see kind of funky shadow happening here. Just look at the photograph and see where the dark areas are. And that same light shadow, like I said, was up here. All up in here. Right up here. So the shadows don't have to be gray. They can have a tinge color to them, and you'll notice they do. So I'll wait till this dries, and I'll go back in and add these little deeper marks that you see. And there's some shadow going on over here, where the trees are. So you, and that's how you add it. It could be gray, gray if you want it to be gray, but I like to add a little color to it because you can see 
It just gives it more of an oomph. And we can put that same kind of color tones, even purple added into the paint's gray right here where the car is. See, and you want to get even darker, you can do that. And then under here, we haven't done the the um, the wheels yet, but we can do those in a second. All under here. It will get darker. I'll make it even darker still a little bit, but so you get that shadow in there. Get it darker by adding more of the paint's gray to that purple. See? Go right under here. That area is like really dark. Right under the car. And we haven't done the wheel the wheels yet. I would just use like paint's gray itself. Just get in here and a little bit concentrated. There's a little teeny bit of light gray on the left side of that one wheel, but then this one's so dark you can't tell. I'm just filling that in. There it is. We haven't done the gray for the, the bumper. We'll do that in a second. And the same shadow you can use for over here. It can be really more intense than what you're seeing and just kind of wiggling there's like a line here, and you kind of wiggle here for the little tree branches that you see, and leaving the white spots. And this one's more intense with this one, and there's a few white spots. It comes out to the car. Just like this. And then even on this little area that we have the bucket in and you can even go right over top of that terracotta pot on the side there and the same thing with this one still taking that purple color see how I make that darker just by going over that color we already did and see now you can see the shadows more you have to play around with that I like to use the little purple tones because it's going to be yellow ground, right? Maybe get a little bit darker again. You might have to do a couple of tries on this one. And then this white threshold definitely gets a color wash over it, but not as much. So you can still kind of sell. And of course, back here, it's even darker. I haven't done the terracotta inside here, but you get my, you get my drift, right? And then the same thing for like these bricks here. It's so light. You're going to vary it with some beiges and some grays. So you can kind of go like this and add some tones. Just took a, like a deeper beige. This looks like oil stains here. It should have been a little bit darker than it is. It got super light. So maybe I'm doing like another pass of the color. But it's really sunny, so not too much. And then, of course, I'll check and see if this is dry. And you can go in and start to do your gray on the bumper, which is mostly white, and it's just a little bit of gray on the edges. So I'm going to zoom in. Listen, this is just like an ink and wash. You don't have to get really technical with this kind of design. I'm just going to add a little bit of gray tones, you see? And then I'll wait till that dries and I'll go in and add that even deeper one on this side. For the light too, you just take in your brush, the tip of it, and just doing these little doodads, like in a circle. See? Wiggle. Leave that one light. And then the window can be all gray. Just like that. Fill it in. See, you're just building, building, building. Of course, the background is very dark. So you get that pants gray, almost like it's right out of the tube. And you're going in here and you're filling this in. 
we're not getting super technical here. We're just making it look how we want it to look. And here we go in again. I'm going to go right in here with the pants gray. There's like that this little white kind of thing here. I don't know what it is, but I decided to put it in there. I'll put some gray tones over it. I can put a nice little light wash of gray or just get rid of it all together. And then there's that weird thing sticking out here. I think I'm just going to wipe it away with, I drew it, but I decided to wipe it away with the paint. And then I'm just going to fill in this really deep. You can make it a deep brown, but I'm making it blackish gray brown. Here I'm going to adding some burnt umber to it, filling that in. I want it pretty intense. It's not black enough, and you can actually add white, I mean, black wash to it. I've added some burnt umber to my paint gray to make it even more, less blue and more of a real deep, dark color. See, now you're getting in there. Just filling it in. Now, obviously here, it's still light on the doorway. I'm gonna just clean up my brush with a little bit of water. I'm gonna go in and fill that area down in here. See, we have that dark shadow. Kind of covering the doorway. You still can see some around, but it's mostly covered. Do you see how that worked? So I did get a little wash in there. I'm gonna add a little brown in here. Little sneaky tricks. Now I just noticed that this is all white when it should be red, but that's okay. We can go back and fix that. Add my red to it. That should be red. No problem. Voila. It's like it never happened. And now you're just kind of filling in all the little doodads. So there's some terracotta, like red. Kind of stone. Oh, actually, more orangey stones. But it doesn't matter if we screw that up. Filling in the gist of everything. The Italian car. You can make the shadows even another pass of the color. If you feel like it's still not dark enough, please feel free to go back in. Get that passive color in there. It's kind of how we do it. And here, that purple going over all of this. If you don't feel like it's dark enough, I'm adding that purple gray again. Get even deeper. That way the awning is really like stands out. See how it stands out now? I have a little more intense over here and here. All this fun stuff. And here you're just kind of filling in some of the greens and the yellow ochres. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to go back in here and fill in some yellow ochre, beigey kind of like from the stonework. Please feel free to make a little more. Um, different tones going in the stonework. See, I'm just kind of dry brushing it, going downward. You can put a deeper color kind of under in here where the, the lines are, just to make them stand out more. Right in here. Feel free to do that. Just give it some variety, some love. And then um, for my little branches on my tree here, I'm just going to go and throw in some deeper brown up in here and again with that terracotta color you know it's not it's sun's hitting it so it's not too dark on either side I'm just going to fix this a little bit and that's pretty much my ink and wash I turn the blue car to a red car doing all that fun stuff and you're just kind of tweaking it you're going back in and adding like little darker values if you need it in certain areas like obviously here is a little area that needs more shadows. Kind of play around with that. How dark you want them to be. There were some kind of fun ones up in here. It's gonna tap. 
And there's our Italian car, right? Like here, we're going to add some other tonalities just to see. I'm just taking the brush and go shh, shh, shh. And you can kind of fill those bricks like in like this. But I used the purple for those shadow tones because it's the opposite of the yellow and it has a nice look to it. Yeah, adding some more color in here. I just feel like it's too washy around by the greens. And that's my Italian car and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> you know, like I said, fill in some more greens in here. I'm going to maybe grab some bright light greens and throw them in here. Because I feel like it's too white. It needs to have some bushiness going on. I'm just going to add some of that color in here. And do fill that white part in a little more. Same thing over here. It's too white. It needed to be filled in. I think there's some, yeah, there's some red, red flowers coming out in the other one. So just grab some, grab some red. You don't have to be so technical with the picture up here. You could actually could have drew a vein, I mean a vein, a vine all the way up here. I'm going to just fill the black awning in with black paint. And that's that. Maybe you want to get a little more shadows on the window. Changing that up, or maybe not. You know, it just depends if you want it dark or not. I want a little bit darker on the right side. The sun's hitting it on that side. And I've noticed I didn't leave any white for around the trim of the car. So if you messed up and didn't leave any white like I did, you just grab some white gouache, put a little bit on the tip of your brush, and then just go around and fill it in. And that'll be that. See? Right in here. Oops. So you just take the tip, just kind of go in here with some white paint to get that shiny areas that you might have missed, you know, with the white gouache. A little bit of this rim going around the car. And even on the little bumper. And that's that. So there's our Italian car. We just changed the value. I mean, excuse me, we changed the color, but you keep the same value tones. And then you're just going to play around with the shadow. Now I've noticed a couple of shadows I want to make a little bit darker, but you've got that purple color and you just kind of go in there and play around with that if you want them a little bit darker in some areas. But that's that. That's our Italian car. And I'm sticking with it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for stopping by my channel. I hope you had fun. Just basically take a photograph that you like or something that you see, draw it. And if you don't like the color of it, change the color. I changed the color from blue to red. Seems more Italian to me. Maybe put some tomato plants out here. I don't know. <laughs> and play around with it. You don't have to keep the same color tone. You just, as long as you know the values, you can change any color, right? I'm just adding a little bit more deeper kind of rustic colors for this brick here and that's all you do so i hope you had fun with this ink and wash take care and i'll speak to you soon hello everyone welcome to my channel my name is ellen so for today's tutorial we're doing an ink and wash of a little italian scene with a car and i just want to show how i would change the color of something that i don't like i didn't like the color of the car in the photograph so i changed it to red um, i'll go over this step by step you know i just show you the difference between